Now, I have my own things at work um, and at home, and and I just want to start off with my own um, contribution to what I'm experiencing. Um, yes, I've, so right now I've already filed for divorce from my husband of nine years. It'll be 10 years next month, but um, I, and in this time, since we're still living together, we don't talk directly to each other at all for any reason, ex with the exception of um, the children. And if there's something they need for school or um, I'm trying to give a compliment, then that's perceived very well. And so um, that's the nature of any discourse between us. And that's how it's been before I filed. And that's how it um, has been for um, uh, ex uh, times throughout our marriage. And by times, like there, there's this um, clock uh, that uh, sometimes we're... Um, he allows for, he's open and he can hear something that I'm saying, whether positive or negative or constructive or receive it critically. And then there's times when he cannot, and there's times where he, it looks as though he can receive it. And then there's, um, and it's actually just going to backfire and st start a physical altercation. And then there's times when, it, when um, it's evident that he's not going to receive anything that I say, do, or even um, something that he thinks that I'm thinking or thinks that I'm doing. And, and that's hard. That's the hardest, excuse me. All of this is hard, but that is the hardest. That part of the clock where he thinks that I'm thinking this, he thinks that I'm saying this, he thinks that I'm doing this because now I'm having to defend myself. I'm having to fight against the things that he has pulled out of the blue, pulled out of thin air. And that's the clock of um, the, uh, the climate between he and I. And so I found, so... Um, but I'm experiencing, uh, even though I've been praying, and I want to share with you that I have been praying, God, what exactly do I need to be focusing on? What I need to be, what do I need to be asking you in prayer? What do I need to be thinking about in my heart? Where do I need, where, where do, where does my heart need to be? And how do I need to be behaving at this time in this season? Because I don't want this time, I don't want to be regretful of this time period. I'm still currently married. I could um, not go to the hearing. I could go to the hearing, but I could do it this way. I really would like to be armed and um, prepared for what does and what doesn't come for my future self. For a large part of this marriage, I have been um, lustful in my thoughts and, and gone to sleep um, um, after such a rough um um, additional day of just heaviness, lack of um, communication, lack of being understood, lack of just being present and available. And I've calmed myself with this tactic of thinking of being able to be in a, in a, um, uh, relationship where someone's holding my hand, someone's being gentle, someone's being cooperative, someone's listening, someone's paying attention to me and having those qualities in another person. And I'll think about that and I'll dream about that and that'll set me and allow me to go to sleep as I as I dream about that. But um the problem with that is sometimes I put a face on it and it's literally just adultery, right? But um it's also um in many ways um discontentment. Um, what I can be focusing on at the, at those times and now moving forward is, wow, God, in this terrible situation, um, what can I learn from it? How can I, how can I make it to where there are different different outcomes um, with these days? In those actual moments when there's argu arguments or, or or where there's um, yelling happening, and it's not an argument because I'm not contributing like by opening my mouth, I'm just hearing him. Um, that's one thing I'm at work now and I'm, and there's a, tr um, uh, a trainer, she's over me. She's been there longer and she'll literally say to me and another coworker that is also a trainer that is also new to the job. She'll say, Hey, you guys need to come to me, um, and talk to me. If you have any questions, Hey, you guys need to come to me. And if there's anything that you don't understand, let me make it clear for you. These are requests and invitations. And so, um, 
out here that and think that this is honest and genuine. But then immediately, I mean, within the span of maybe five or 10 minutes, there'll be a situation to where I did something wrong. I didn't do something the right way. I didn't do something the way that she has asked. And to my knowledge, um, this I'll do it confidently I'm to wipe this off with this kind of spray. I'm to um, make this move whenever this um, time period comes. And so um, there's a lot of routine steps in my particular job, uh, working in the jail. And she'll ask me, do you think that you have what it takes to run this for? Do you think you have what it takes if I weren't here to know what to do, to know how to respond, to know um, how to act in this kind of situation? What is the call that you make when this kind of situation breaks out? And um, me answering those questions she still then has, well, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And so I build, I'm under the impression that her um, her questioning is not so that we can know, but it's 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 kind of feeding her. It's feeding her It's energizing her so that she can continue with the thought process on why she's treating us the way that she's treating us. And the way that she's treating us is not, it's, it's, it's right below the line of to where we would need to do something drastic, but because it's so close to that line to where I and the other trainee would need to do something drastic, um, I think that, that we are aiding and abating in the continuation of it. The other trainee has come to me and said, have you noticed her eye rolls? Have you noticed that when we talk to her, she'll be silent? Have you noticed that when, or, or uh, when we question, uh, when we go to her and ask her a question, she'll be silent and she'll ignore us? Well, yes, but this is the same woman that says, hey, come to me. She repeats, she repeats that, but it, like within five or 10 minutes, we'll say, um, the, the other cleaner is finished. Can we use this to, um, this cleaner to clean this um, device or whatever? And she'll, She'll roll her eyes, open it, and then walk away. And I'm also noticing with a, another trainee who is male, who does this form of talking to where I would classify as brown nosing. That's one. To where he, um, he dopes on other people. But he, he negatively comments on other people. That's one. And two, uh, I mean, that's two. But number one is he'll... He'll ask a question and then she'll be like, um, yeah, it's actually going to be this one. The reason why we don't use this is because it has a chemical inside. It's going to ruin that machine. And she'll answer it fully, clearly. It's so, and I do believe it's because he's male. I don't believe she's attracted to the guy. I do believe she's male. And uh, because he, uh, the other trainee is male. Um, I've also noticed when we go inside a certain tank that, well, the entire floor is male. The entire floor in this particular jail tower is male. But when she goes into the jail, um, this uh, one tank that has predominantly males that are not only African-American, but they joke with they joke with her. But the way she responds, she's receiving it well. She's receiving it as compliments. And the problem is, is that when you're receiving compliments well from manipulators and liars, um you take it per you're taking it personally as opposed to you're aware that they're making a comment that is positive that could be received positively you're just not letting it go to your heart to, as though it's genuine because <laughs> they're liars and manipulators right so um when i see her take her time with them as opposed to the spanish tank that is um immediately goes to I, um uh, ins they get um the, they're sent to wherever they're in the process of deportation because of the offenses that they have made, because of their status. And because of their status, they get deported. And so um, I think, well, she doesn't have the time to build rapport with those in that tank. There's also a tank that shares the same kind of um, amount of people in um, the turn that is very flirtatious with her. Is it flirtatious? Okay, I don't want to say flirtatious, but they made comments that are positive about her character um, and her hair. She's It's not that she's ugly, but she's kind of round. She doesn't have like a womanly figure, but she has, she's top heavy. But um, 
it's not right off the bat that oh wow you're um uh, beautiful that's the comment that's the um i'm just judging by the comments of, of how they perceive her so um but the way that she responds to all other tanks on the floor um, she doesn't give time to have feedback shared with her. She'll sh shut the door, turn the lights off, end of the end of the day, end of the segment, end of whatever um, um, thing that is being granted to these inmates in this particular cell. But with this particular tank, she is fond of several and she's smiling. She, they will literally see her, hear her say, you all need to go back into your tank because they're out They're in a a large a large space and that has separate tanks but um within that um but the tanks and space to like mingle outside of their um beds and things like that is also under this um one tank so she'll see them playing cards she'll see them gathered in conversation she'll see them um when taking a shower or when sweeping whatever involved in something else she'll make the announcement you guys need to go into and lay down go into your tank and lay down and um, she'll see them drag their feet. She'll see them look her in the face, turn around, finish their game, finish what they're doing, con enter into a conclusion stage, as opposed to just drop what they're doing and go in. And when I see her respond, not respond to how they responded, I'm like, there's favoritism. And yes, they're, and yes, they're males. Now, if these were females, I would also like to know if she would um, do the same thing. Um, if they were black, if they were commenting on making the same kind of comments that would, you know, be suitable for the, the, uh, for that space in that place or whichever, but she's not the same across the board. She's not responding with the same kind of rudeness and meanness, in, um, um, sh right. It's, a um, uh, it's a short of tolerance she's just agitated and frustrated quickly and immediately with myself and with the other uh, female training so, so strange but um i want to know more about myself when it comes to uh, my spouse and this particular woman and i'm exp these if this is not the first time i've had these kinds of people where i've been in the space where I'm experiencing something. I'm having to wait and be like, what? Yes, I do see the difference. I do see that it's particularly toward me and uh, one other per person. And there isn't anything that I have done to amount for the kind of, um, to to the level in which they are responding to me. Um, I've, just, I've wanted to respond with the same kind of breath the same kind of um, ignore them, act like I don't hear and be ready for if they want to do something physically, if they want to go verbally. Um, but um, immediately so in my thoughts, I'll jump to, um, I, need to I need to show that there's God in my heart and there's forgiveness and there's this, this and that. In the scripture, God, uh, Jesus himself would talk with the disciples and he would ask them, do you still not know? Are you still questioning? Um, um, uh, why are you this? And he would, and it, he wasn't always responding with a, uh, a rudeness, but he definitely was responding with a sternness. When you read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the way that Jesus responds to his disciples, he uh, responds as though they should know. They should know by now. They should know the, the answer. They should know that he's not limited. They should know. There's an expect. It looks as though that there's either an expectation because he asks, do you still not know? Have you not seen? And so he's like calling the disciples to, to meet him where they can, where they can or where they, he's expecting them to, to just have either to have not answered, asked that question or to have known that answer. And so, um, I want to embody that because I don't know that I'm, it's not that I, I don't know that I'm there yet. Cause I can't compare myself <laughs> to G all knowing Jesus and be new in the job and be like all knowing a confidence level is going to grow with rep repetition, familiarity. Um, 
I don't know how you, someone can grow under this kind of person. She, she, I, I, I'm, I'm suspecting, I'm, I'm suspecting and accusing her of being different toward um, girls, but there are girls that she talks to and mingle with. And I think that her and other kinds of people, they, they can only vibe with people that won't say anything to her or they have the ability to say something to her and she can't say anything back. I, um, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I also see sergeants, um, I also see sergeants in the presence and her presence and the way that she will talk with them is not with honor and reverence, like they're higher, whichever. And so that's concerning if I wanted to like make a comment and report to her, a report about her. I'm not going to go tell on you to somebody that you clearly have um, some kind of um, hold over. So um, um, that, so, but there's lieutenants, right? So um, I would need to look into that. But um, I, I'm wanting within myself to make sure that I really understand uh, because I'm reading the text in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm reading how the disciples are asking questions. So they have the um, ab ability to do that. He got Jesus is available for them to ask those questions. He's there present, but he's also there just wanting them to come out of their ignorance, out of them not knowing why he said this, why he did that. Why did you have to spit and rub the eye? Why did you say what you said to those, to the, to the larger group? Jesus is responding to their questions. Um, even if it was privately, a lot of times in the gospel, Jesus responds to the disciples um, without analogy, without metaphor, he responds to them directly when it's just the disciples. When you read that, he continuously speaks in parables, continuously speaks in parables to the, to the masses, to the large groups. But when it came to just um, the disciples, he would explain directly that the, what, what he meant by that is this what he wants us to do is, is this. And I believe it was the, 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 the desire of the disciples wanting to know, not wanting to hear, but wanting to know and, and actually take away with uh, his wisdom that he blessed them with depth. He blessed them with the understanding. He wasn't just talking. He blessed them with the understanding. So, um, I, I, the way that this, uh, my spouse and this girl's, they're behaving, they're obviously nar narcissists and they do work well with, um, compliments, but their tactics are immature and intentional <laughs> and intentional. And so, um, according to Proverbs, when you give wisdom to a fool, then you could be mocked. Um, they may take it and it perceive as though they're um, going to now operate based off of this knowledge that you've shared with them. But because they are foolish, they don't have the substance to, to allow it to sink into them and become a part of them. Believers do. The saved have the ability to hear spiritual wisdom, wisdom, point blank in the story, to hear wisdom and to now live as though they have been taught what is wise. Non-believers will hear wisdom, acknowledge that that was not even their perspective, but that, but what you, you just said is probably what really was of this situation between you and I and uh, may not even have a rebuttal for it uh, because it's wisdom and it's superior to them, their unsaved thoughts. 
But because they are unsaved, they don't have the substance to now use it. They don't have the saved heart to use spiritual wisdom, to use it now that they have heard it. So what does that mean for us, the saved? The saved that has the spiritual wisdom. Sometimes, and when we don't, we have the ability to receive it well. We have the ability to desire, to go yearn and look in, to go intently. I want to know and understand and it will be found and we will and wisdom will be found um by us when we search intentional intently intentionally and then we will from that point move forward with the wisdom that we have learned with the wisdom we have read as saved people what do we do when we are in under the authority under the oppression under the annoyance under the um, these kinds of situations. Do you give wisdom? No. Do you play the part of the fool or whichever? Um, definitely pray for one first. And then two, <sighs> listen. Pray and then listen. Pray specifically about this person and the, the stress or the, the constant setback of reasoning they are just consistently <laughs> irrational <laughs> consistently just whatever the unsaved person's behavior is consistent with um, or inconsistent because uh, unsaved people don't um, probably lack in consistency um, when I say pray that these the disciples went to Jesus privately and they heard what he said to the large group, but they asked again by what he told them, what did you mean by that though? God, I'm in this situation. You brought me here. You're allowed it to happen. How do you want me to act in here? It's causing me stress. It's causing me heaviness. It's causing me to be um, intrusive, thoughtfully about this person. They can, they are not my God. They want to be my God. They're not as important to me, but they want to be made important. And that's probably what the issue is. <laughs> that's probably why the male officer gets a lot more um, tolerance from her than, than, the, uh, than us two, because we're trying to relate as just fellow women. And he's trying to relate through brown nosing. Brown nosing, I mean, just, you know, lying her butt up with um, oh yeah, you know it, you know, you're, you're great. Oh, you got the right answer. Oh, whatever you say goes or whatever. And, um, I haven't used that. I haven't utilized that tactic and it's not my MO and it's, it's so disingenuous to myself that 